The Shining Darkness was released in May 2010. Notable cards in this set include Blackwing Breeze the Zephyr, Spore, Infernity Launcher, Into the Void, and one of the most infamous ritual monsters ever created, Herald of Perfection. In this series, both Nim Nim and myself will be opening 24 booster packs or one box of a core Yu-Gi-Oh booster set. We will build a deck and play a best two out of three, and the winner will receive a small prize to upgrade their deck. However, in each episode, we will open another box of the next set that was released moving in chronological order, constantly upgrading our decks before dueling each other at the end of each episode. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series. What's going on guys, it's Simo. Just wanna quickly remind you that if you haven't already gotten your first edition Kingslayer shirt, now's the time to do it. Links are down in the description. Thank you all so much for your continued support and I hope you enjoy the episode. The wins are finally in our favor because we have whirlwinded our way into another winner's circle. Man, these black wings are killing it right now. And the best part is this is the Shining Darkness episode. There's more black wing support to be had. So we'll see how that goes. However, we need to start off with our winner's wheel, of course. Turbo Pack 2 is up for grabs this time around. Not as good as Turbo Pack 1, I would say, but it's still pretty decent. So let's go ahead and just spin the wheel and see if we can get lucky. And maybe we'll be able to open some Turbo Pack 2 we'll have to see and it looks like that's where we're going okay so just to give you guys an idea of what is in turbo pack 2 for the ultimate rare we have gladiator beast heraclinos that's like whatever we're not playing glads we have another shot of chaos sorcerer i think we already have three of these if not we have two but i think this is largely irrelevant super rares include gravekeeper's assailant magical dimension foolish Burial. I think this might be our only opportunity to get Foolish Burial throughout the entire progression series. It initially debuted, I believe, in a structure deck, and then it's only like in side sets for the most part. So I think this might be our only shot at it. I really don't want Gage to get this, that's for sure. We have Beckoning Light as well. We already have that at common, so that's no big deal. The rares are a little bit interesting. So we have Gravekeeper, Spear Soldier, My Body is a Shield, Magical Stone Excavation. This was another prize card. So I don't know how good this is, but I mean, it's cool to have Mist Archfiend, Light Imprisoning Mirror, and Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. But the commons, I really think, are where this pack shines. So we have a shot at Anti-Spell Fragrance. That's very strong. Gravekeepers, Cannon Holders, whatever. Necro Valley. There's a shot we could build Gravekeepers a little bit later on once Gravekeepers Recruiter is released, and Necro Valley is essential for this deck to be good. Necro Valley would also hose Gage's deck because it's just that strong of a card, and so if we can get Necro Valley, if we can get some Commandants, then when we get the Recruiters later on, we might be able to assemble ourselves a deck. It may be optimistic, but if there's any chance, it's going to come from Turbo Pack 2 and these copies of Necro Valley. Autonomous Action Unit, Anti-Spell, Reflect Bounder's a nice one. I actually pulled one of these in the original pack, so that's cool. If I get a second one, I won't really care too much. Mausoleum of the Emperor, Gravekeeper's Commandant to fetch the Necro Valley, just a solid card all around, and a Iron Core of Kawaki Meru. So let's go ahead and get into Turbo Pack 2 and flip up some cards. There's a Necro Valley. There's a Gravekeeper's Commandant. Super happy to see it. If we can get two more packs like this, I can't complain. The funny thing is, I think I actually have already a playset of Commandant from the original set. I think I pulled one ultimate rare and one rare, so I might already have three Gravekeepers Commandant, but we need at least one more Necro Valley to make this deck even somewhat viable. All right, pack number two, and there's an Anti-Spell Fragrance. I think this is a nice pickup. This was originally a video game promo, and so having a way that we can slow Gage's spells down, we already have Imperial Order, so it's probably fine, but this is just a nice card that may make its way into the side deck at some point. This is a pretty strong card. And then for the third pack, last but not least, oh my god, we got Foolish Burial too? Are you serious? Foolish Burial and Necro Valley. The weird thing is, I actually don't really need Foolish Burial right now. I can't really think of a purpose where this is good for me. But, uh, okay, I'm not gonna complain about that in the slightest. Here I am just looking for Necro Valley, and we pull Foolish Burial. Okay, I, I can't complain. I could have not wished for anything better out of these packs. That's insane. So, three packs of Turbo Pack 2 already done, and we still have the Shining Darkness, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's hand it on over to Gage so he can tell you all about it. All right, guys, as unfortunate as it is, we're back here sitting in the loser circle. Fuck Kalut, dude. 
fuck Kalut. As if Black Wings already weren't looking scary enough, The Shining Darkness, released May 11th, 2010, brings a whole new slew of Black Wing cards to upgrade Alex's strategy. And some of them are actually not that terrible, so it's gonna look pretty scary if he can get his grip on a couple of these. X Sabers get Bogger Knight too, which is a huge card here when it's normal summon, special summon level 4 or lower X Saber from your hand. Again, I feel like we're just a little bit short of playing like an X Saber deck. There are a lot of cards that are higher rarity to get for X Sabers that we just didn't get before, like Hyun Lei is a very important synchro monster we didn't get our hands on. Not something really to consider, but Breeze the Zephyr for Black Wings, this card's nuts, guys. If it's added from deck to hand by a card effect, you can special it, so if you Black Whirlwind it, you can just drop it from your hand and you can use it for synchro material for a Blackwing monster. Oh god, I hope Alex doesn't pull a breeze. Infernity Mirage and Beetle are two really cool Infernity cards, and Verdi Avengers up there too, so them really good Infernity cards dropping in this set here, but we still don't have Archfiend. I don't know if we get Archfiend, actually. Spore is an incredible plant monster. This thing was on the ban list before, but now it is back at three. Incredible card back in plant format. Again, something we'd be considering if we had Lone Fire, but we just don't, so we can't really consider it too much, but Spore... Crazy good card. Ronin Tonin drops in this set. Incredible frog support that pairs really well with uh, Swap Frog from Stardust Overdrive. We're starting to see his big brother, but Herald of Perfection also dropped in this set too. Herald of Ultimateness is something that's being played now in Drytron. But Herald Perfection, oh, he was the OG one, dude. Ultimate rare version of this card, one of the most gorgeous ultis in the game. The Synchro slot is nothing impressive this time around. Black Wing, Chaos King, Archfiend. Ferdy, Doom Dragon, Splendid Road, Chaos Goddess. None of these are particularly that great. Uh, they're not anything like outstanding like the last few sets we've had where there's at least one good generic synchro monster. Really, none of these uh, tend to wow me that much. Infernity Launcher, Into the Void, two limited cards that are in this set. Infernity Launcher's bonkers. It's a shame we can only play one of it if we do pull the one of it. Could you imagine if we were able to play like three of this card if we pulled it? Oh my god. And Into the Void's just a degenerate draw card that actually paired really well with uh, cards that can be discarded during the end phase like the Danger Monsters when those were released. Into the Void at three was just, it was insane. Pretty sure Alex made a Tech Tuesday on Leeching the Light. Oh, if only he was in this position so he could tell you all about it. He probably knows way more about it than I do. And then wrapping up the set in some of the hollow slots, Dark Souls, an incredible X Saber monster as well. Uh, we also have Infinity Barrier, which is just the cornerstone of the deck, the greatest counter trap card in the deck. Also, we got Infinity Break in this set too. Pretty nice as well. Genix, Undane, and Controller are both in this set too. Great combo to pair with back in Mermails back in the day. And uh, that's about it. Uh, Gen X Neutron. Anybody remember when this was like a $20 card? Oh. Oh man, brings me back. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's just get into Shining Darkness. Let's see what we get. 24 packs of it, baby. I'm feeling good. All right, 24 packs of the Shining Darkness. The cards are going for in here are obviously gonna be the Blackwing cards. I think there's Breeze, Freeze, I forget the name of it, but it's a level 100 attack. And if you search it, you can like special summon it. I think it's also a tuner, so it gives us a nice target off Whirlwind for the smaller ones. It's an ultra rare though, so I'm not too optimistic that we're gonna pull it. Also, there are the Synchro Monsters in the set. There's also some generic level eights that we could possibly play. We've been dying for a level eight synchro that's actually decent. I think Infernity Doom Dragon is in here and that's just 3000 attack. So honestly, I'll take it. I think that's perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and start flipping and see what we get. We get a super rare right off the bat. That is Core Overclock. This is a card I have never seen before, but it's an Iron Core Quaki Meru card most likely. So we're probably going to ignore it. This pack also contained Blackwing Gilbly, the Searing Wind. This is a zero attack 1600 defense Blackwing that says when your opponent declares an attack, you can special summon this card from your hand and once per turn you can switch the original attack and defense of this card until the end of this turn this may be a better crush card target than mistral i'm not sure though because it's not a tuner it is level three so it's difficult but this is like slightly better i think than mistral because it like can kind of do something where mistral just you know kind of sits there most of the time we'll have to see this is a nice pack because we got spore spore is just a nice tuner to have access to especially when we're getting into some of the better synchros I'm a little bit scared that Gage might have access to this, especially with like painful choice. It just makes that card a little bit stronger. This is a common, so we should be getting these, but a uh, nice pickup. Also don't want to forget about this. This is Silent Graveyard. I think the original name for this was Forbidden Graveyard. It got renamed. It says discard a card. Effects that activate in the graveyard this turn are negated. It is a quick play spell. Not the best right now, but if we ever get into a point where our decks are very graveyard reliant, this card will definitely be coming in. There's another super rare Bird of Roses. It's a wind level 4, 1800 
300 attack, 1500 defense monster. When this face up attack position card is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon two plant type tuner monsters from your deck in face up defense position. You know, for the purposes of our series, this isn't terrible. This doesn't synergize with our deck whatsoever, but uh, this card's okay. This is actually a super underrated card, Chaos Trap Hole. It's a counter trap where you pay 2000 life points when a lighter dark monster would be summoned, negate the summon, and if you do, banish it. This is an extremely good card. This is also a common. This may make its way into the side deck. I'm not 100% sure. The problem is Gage has cards that can take out my back row before he can go into the big bombs, but this is still a pretty nice pickup. Another super rare, Power Frame. This is a trap card. When a face-up monster you control is targeted for an attack by a monster with a higher attack, target the attack target, negate the attack, and if you do equip this card to that target, the equip monster gains attack equal to the difference between its attack and the attack of its attacker when this card resolves. That card says the word attack way too many times for me to care. Moving on. All right, pack number one, Shining Darkness. Blah, flip it up. An ultra rare, Black Wing Dragon, the cover card. Not anything I'm going to be looking at playing, really, but it is cool. It is cool. At least I get the Black Wing cards this time around. Oh, there's the Bogart Knight. Let's go, baby. X Saber Bogart Knight. That's a really, really good X Saber monster. I hope I can pair with a Dark Soul this episode. Dark Soul is sick, too. The Palomuro, too. Package is coming together. No, oh, the launcher, the infernity launcher, baby. We got our necromancers. Can we get a barrage in this set too? Oh man, I still am actually curious if we even get Archfiend. I don't know its official release for infernity Archfiend, but if we just don't get it, there's no chance in playing the deck either because Archfiend is literally what makes the deck go around. But launcher, baby, that's a big pull. Well, there's an ultra rare, although it's not the ultra rare that I wanted. This is Chaos King Archfiend. I don't even know if I can summon this. Yeah, it needs a fiend type tuner, so I don't think that's going to be doable. When it declares an attack, you can switch the current attack and defense of all face-up monsters your opponent controls until the end of the battle phase. That's kind of a neat one. It's a little bit specific, but it would have been nice to have if I actually played some fiend monsters. I do play Sangen, but Sangen is not unfortunately a tuner. We also got Genex, Undyne, and Key Mouse, as well as Ronin Toad, and these cards are like all just nice, good common cards that came in this set. Well, there's a nice pickup, but it's not the pickup I was specifically looking for. This is Black Winged Dragon. Now, this is, I guess, a little bit thematic because I'm playing Black wing, but I think I would have preferred the Infernity Doom Dragon just a little bit more because Black Winged Dragon's effect isn't particularly great. So it is generic, it is a level 8, and it's 2800 attack. So that I'm happy about. Now, however, if you would take damage from a card effect, place a Black Feather counter on this card instead. This card loses 700 attack for each Black Feather counter on it, and once per turn, you can remove all Black Feather counters on this card, target a face-up monster your opponent controls, the target loses 700 attack for each Black Feather counter you removed, and if it does, and inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack lost by this effect. Again, there's like no way that this effect is ever going to be relevant that I can see. I mean, the biggest thing here is that we now have a generic level eight synchro that we can actually go into, and it actually has a decent attack stat at 2,800. This is also good too, because this gives me a little bit more versatility when I take Gage's monsters with Snatch Steel and the like, because now if I need to go into a synchro eight, I actually have the ability to do so. There is a second copy of Core Overclock, the card that is never going to see the light of day. We also got an Infernity Avenger. I don't think Infernity is viable in our specific format. That would have been crazy, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Intercept Wave. All right. Nimble Sunfish has another super rare. There, those are starting to come in now. Energetic Sundine up there too. Another Nimble Sunfish. I, I think that's actually pretty dope because this someone's Nimble Sunfish, doesn't it? When this card destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, send a fish down. Yeah, look, we got two Nimble Sunfish now. Fish OTK, baby. It's coming in hot. Cards for Black feathers. Oh man, if only we were on that Blackwing strategy. That's a hell of a card. Great draw card. At least Alex doesn't get it. Hopefully that means we snatched our copy from him. And the controller to pair with the Undine too. Pretty cool. Alright, coming up on the last two packs here. Anything impressive to pull out of the back end? Mmm... Uh, oh, and the Mirage too, baby! We got a Mirage and we got a Launcher! The Infernities, dude. I still don't think there's enough to play with. Can I get Archfiend yet, please? I think we only got one Beetle too, which is kind of whack. But all, all together, you know what? I'll take it. Not a bad opening. There is our third copy of Core Overclaw. Could you guys imagine if this were any other good super rare and we just pulled a playset of it? That could have been three Fiendish Chains. That could have been three Cyber Dragons. That could have been three Brain control. I'm trying to think of other good super rares we've had, but wow, 
wow, that some of the luck that we have in the progression series is just unmatched. We're on the last few packs here. I didn't get a breeze, it looks like. I really, really wanted to, but it is what it is. It is an ultra rare, so I'm not expecting too much. Let's go ahead and flip up these last ones. Not too much to talk about here. Let's go ahead and get into the last two packs. And a secret rare. Of course, it is Saber Vault. Uh, again, we're not playing X Sabers, I don't think. Each face-up X Saber monster on the field gains 100 attack times its level and loses 100 defense times its level. This is a secret rare field spell, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, 2010 was a wild time. Let's go ahead and get into the last pack, though. Again, not expecting too much. And another Chaos King Archfiend. Unbelievable. That could have been the Infernity Doom Dragon, but I really can't complain. I did get the Black Winged Dragon, so that is going to make its way in. I suppose I could play the Chaos King Archfiend in case Gage does have a Fiend Tuner, I guess. I think that's like a bit optimistic. We did get some Chaos Trap Holes. We got some Silent Graveyards. We got some okay commons. So I'd say overall, this set was pretty good. I mean, we've definitely had worse sets, let's be honest. So let's go ahead and load up Dueling Book and start building. All right, welcome back, everybody. We changed up a little bit from the deck here just to ensure that I don't have to worry about Icarus Attack anymore. That's right, we're clearing those landmines away with traps done in the main deck, baby. I've been noticing Alex is playing a shit ton of traps recently that are just destroying my day. So I figure traps done is going to be the way to go if I'm going to try to be able to stick a CED or the Dark Arm Dragon and just dominate him for game there. My body as a shield is also in at three because I'm just that terrified of Icarus Attack and Torrential Tribute. Cards like that. I also decided to take a card from the Shining Darkness. That's Chaos Trap. Well, I threw three of it in the side deck that we managed to pull. This might actually be an okay card to side in because all of Alex's monsters are either light or dark. He's playing Black Wings. So if I get the chance to be able to banish any of those monsters, but also just negating the summon is huge. This is something we didn't really have access to with cards like Solid and Judgment because we weren't able to pull them. So being able to negate the summon of something is a massive, massive leg up. And I fully expect this to be decided in uh, in any scenario that I'm going to be going first. Hopefully it's enough to bring us to victory there. Again, now we're just dealing with the fact that we have tons of cards to be able to play through multiple back row and massive bombs like Instant Fusion plus a level 2 to make Black Rose Dragon, Chaos Emperor Dragon, Dark Arm Dragon, the big bad. You know, we got to bring them out occasionally. I've got a really good feeling about this episode. Hopefully we can follow through with it though. I'm looking to end Alex's streak while it is nice and blossoming, you know? Gotta crush it while it's nice. Those of you who are observant may notice that this deck is almost exactly identical to the one I played last episode. And if it ain't broke, why would I try to fix it? Because we have just been crushing lately. I think we 2-0'd gauge the last two episodes with this deck. And so I'm feeling pretty good. So we'll quickly do the card by card just for anyone who might be tuning in midway through the series. Two copies of Blizzard. This is a nice card to be able to enable some synchro plays. We can have easy access to either Goyo Guardian or Armed Wing. Three copies of Bora, great for swarming. It's a Piercer at 1700, midway up the Black Whirlwind Totem Pole. Two copies of Gale. It's great for special summoning. It halves the attack of his monsters to so chop them down to size, and that way we can get over some larger threats. Three copies of Kalut. I think this is just the new mascot of the series because this card has been putting in so much work. It is amazing. One copy of Mistral. This is only in here for crush cards, so we can search it off Black Whirlwind if we get Whirlwind plus any of our other Black Wings, and that way we have that set up. I decided to keep Mistral in here because it is a tuner, and I think that is valuable with something like Shura, and I think having that extra layer of versatility in being a tuner outweighs it being a slightly more playable card. I would have loved to get something like Vayu an episode or two ago, but it just didn't happen, so Mistral's the next best in my eyes. Three copies of Shura, three copies of Soroka, one Kaiku to keep him off of Emperor Dragon as well as Dark Arm Dragon, and two copies of Sangen. Man, these have been putting in work, and I've been loving them. They can search about half the Black Wing arsenal, but they can also be used as crush card fodder, so that's why these are in here. For the spells, we have Allure of Darkness, which can cycle through our entire deck and allow us to go two cards deeper. Triple Whirlwind, this is the reason we've been winning, let's be honest. Three Book of Moon, a great catch-all. It stops synchros, it can stop the big monsters. It just stops pretty much everything, and there's almost zero way to interact with this card. Heavy Storm, Pot of Greed, Raigeki, and Snatch Steel to snatch away games. For the traps, one bottomless, one crush card. We still have yet to resolve this card, and we're on this win streak. I really just want to rub the salt in the wound and crush card him this time around. We just haven't seen it. We've actually been getting a lot of our low attack monsters in the last few episodes. We just haven't been getting the crush card. It's a one of so there's not much we can do. One Fiendish Chain, three Icarus Attack, probably the all-star of the deck, if I'm being completely honest. One Imperial Order, one Royal Oppression, and one 
Torrential Tribute. For the side deck one, Cyber Dragon for going second. DD Crow's nice because it's a wing beast for Icarus attack. It is a dark for Allure of Darkness. It's under a thousand attack for Crush card. And in a pinch, I can discard it to get something out of his graveyard if I think he might be on Dark Armed or Emperor. Magical Scientist and a slew of monsters he can summon. I just don't really see the point to main deck this right now because I'm trying to find a purpose for this card in the main deck. But if I figure one out, I'll throw him in. He's in the side for now. Two copies of Raikou to out anything weird. I think this is a little bit more flexible than something like Twister for back row, just because Raikou can hit any card. It is a little bit slower because it does have to flip. However, I decided to bring Brain Control back into the side deck here because I think now that we have synchros that are covering a much wider span of levels, that this card could be good in the right circumstance. I don't know what Gage is going to do to adjust his strategy, but Brain Control can just be a huge blowout in tandem with any of our tuners. Dark Hole for when I know I'm going second. My body is a shield to protect our board. Two Soul Release to purge his graveyard. A second bottomless in case I feel the need to play more outs to Chaos Emperor Dragon or Dark Arm Dragon. Two Compulse for the same reason. Skill Drain's a great card in this deck. I just haven't seen a point to play it yet. And Trap Dust Shoot for when I know I'm going first. For the extra deck, we have all the fusions. We have Black Wing Dragon making its way in. I think this is a great card. Again, it could be better, but it's a level eight generic synchro. I can't really ask for more. We have Armed Wing for piercing. We have Goyo for stealing. We have Magical Android for healing. We have Power Tool Dragon for doing absolutely nothing. We have two Psychic Life Trancer. We have one Gishilnadon, and we have one XX Saber Gotham's, which funny enough in the last episode, actually almost came up. So I'm actually really glad I took your guys' advice and put this in because who knew stealing Goyo Guardian and syncing it up with any of my level three tuners would be relevant, but it's there. Is it gonna happen again? We'll see. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Wait, hang on. Are you there? I'm, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just couldn't hear you all the way down there because you're oh! on three, my friend. <laughs> oh, I thought you were serious for a moment. I can never trust you for anything anymore, dude. I Look, today I'm twitching it around, bro. You're going to get absolutely decimated today. Am I? You okay, are, bro. We'll it's it's we'll going to happen. To be fair, you know, I could have started with a terrible shining darkness pun, so I figured I would switch it up a little I bit. I totally like expected that. Evidently. Honestly, I didn't expect anything <laughs> less from you, and I'm still disappointed. So <laughs> Yeah, I, most people probably are. So <laughs> shining darkness, though, I would say this set was like, okay. Like, there, it's not like an amazing set set but we've definitely had worse sets for mm -hmm. sure some of the cards in here and say like the infernity stuff in particular you get like yeah. barrier you get uh break and you get mirage there's some good infernity cards but i was yeah, wondering I mean, I... Let, can i ask you this now do we even okay. ever get infernity arch fiend i don't know i'd have to look i was trying to think about that during the opening and i was saying that i'm not sure if we can actually build a full infernity deck if we could then that might be crazy, but we'll have to look into it. I'm sure people in the comments already know, so they'll tell us. All right, you ready to duel today, bud? Yep, let's go ahead and shout out our patron while we do that. Rock, paper, scissors, Mr. Kyle Byrne. Thank you so much for the support. And, ooh, Kyle Byrne solidifying that burn because we are going to be going second. Good All luck, right. buddy. Good luck, duelist. Okay, I will go stand by main. I will set a monster in face down defense position and I will end my turn duelist. So much for changing it up, exciting gameplay. We're just setting I... a monster and passing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll draw, I'll go to main one. Let's start off big. Let's bring out Shura, the blue flame. Yep, Shura's good. And I think, yeah, let's go for it. We'll special summon a Gale while we're at it. You got it. Let's just bring on the pressure. I'll attack with Shura. All right, Mystic Tomato. Okay, so we're gonna have two triggers here. Uh, mine is optional and I am turn player. Yours is also optional. So you are actually gonna go first here. Okay, I'll pull out another Mystic Tomato with my Mystic Tomato. Okay, if only there was a black wing I could actually summon that could kill that Mystic Tomato. <laughs> yep, there just isn't one big enough. <laughs> yeah, or if only if Gale had a quick effect, that would also be nice. All right, so off of my Shura effect, I'm gonna go ahead and grab myself a copy of Blizzard. Sure. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's going on, guys? Simo here. So I'm editing this now, and I see that I accidentally special summoned Blizzard, which you cannot do. Now, I had a copy of Mistral, the Silver Shield in my deck, which is a level two tuner, and I was going to make that play regardless. So had I realized it in the moment, I could have just swapped the two around, and the board state would have been exactly the same. I know you guys are going to eat me alive for it in the comments, but it wouldn't have made a difference in the outcome, so I just wanted to address this now. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the episode. I'll head on over to main two. This is a bit of a weird play, but I kind of want to be super aggressive. I'm going to snatch steal your mystic tomato. All right, you can have it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just get rid of that immediately. And uh, let's just go into a nice little armed wing here. Yep. 
And uh, I'll set a couple in pass. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw for turn. I'll start my turn by uh, special summoning Cyber Dragon. That is a okay. All right, I gotta think here. I'm going to normal summon Jane Lightsworn Paladin. Sure. Okay, I'm gonna go battle phase. Okay. I'm going to attack over your Shura with my Cyber Dragon. Hmm. I'm going to book the Cyber Dragon. Sure. I'll attempt to attack over Shura again with Jane. Okay, so I'll take 300. Okay. Main phase two. I'll set a card and I'll go to the end phase on mill two. Okay. There goes a Fiendish Chain and a Krebs. All right, I'll draw. Going over to main one here. Uh, let's start by using the effect of Gale. Let's slash the attack of that Jane by half. Sure. Let me throw something on it. There you go. Okay. Let's go ahead and normal summon a Kaiku. Um, ooh. I'll activate bottomless on Kaiku. That's respectable. That's that's understandable. Okay, so Kaiku will get banished. All right, we'll go to battle phase. I am going to swing over your Jane with my Gale for 400 here. No problem. And I'll attack into your Cyber Dragon with Armed Wing. I'll use the effect. It'll gain 500 attack, and it has piercing, so you are actually going to take 1,200 here. Damn, Armed Wing is too strong. It's not bad. He's not bad. I'll just go ahead and pass it over. All right, I'll draw. Interesting. All right, give me a sec to think here. Uh-oh. Looking in the extra deck, that's never a good sign. <laughs> what are the chances? Uh, no, nah, I think you would have used it already. I'm going to normal summon Krebons. Krebons is fine. I'm going to activate instant fusion. Oh, here we go with the instant fusion shenanigans again. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to bring out a dark fire dragon. Okay, so this is not your normal target. Typically, you go for Giltia here, so you don't want to go for the Black Rose play. This would lead me to believe you want to go for the Goyo play, and I think I'm okay with that. All right, cool. So we'll use these two then, and I'll bring out the Goyo Guardian. I actually think I'm okay with that, sure. You're okay with it? All right, sick. Yeah. I'll go battle phase, and I'm going to attack. Okay. Let me see what this armed wing does. Hold on. It's only when it attacks a defense position monster, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. okay. I had to make sure. <laughs> um, still, you picking up it. Damn. Still, this is actually a tough pick for you here. Yeah, because I'm still thinking you could like slash it with Gale, and that would really fucking suck. Yeah, so I'm curious what you're gonna pick. You know what? I think mm, I think Gale's the right choice here. I'm gonna attack over the Gale. All right, so I'm gonna take 1500. Uh, Gale's gonna go to the graveyard. Would you like to take it? I would love to take it. I bet you would. Okay, okay. and then this has to go in defense. Correct. Main phase two. I'm gonna slash her arm wing. All right, slashed. It's your turn. Go ahead. All right. I will draw. It's not too bad. Let's go ahead and fire off a Regeki. Oh, that's that's such BS, bro. <laughs> Did you top it too? I didn't. I had it in my oh, hands. It's turn okay. one. <laughs> I'll hit in for a nice good, uh, what is this, 1150? Yep. Love All those right. rounded numbers, you know. Yeah, of course. I'll just pass the turn. I'll draw. Set end. All right, come on, <laughs> arm doing beat down, I suppose. I'll draw. Yeah, I'll just go to battle again. All right, 11.50 is A-OK. -okay. Yep, 11.50. Main two, I'll just go ahead and set a card. We'll pass a turn. Draw. <laughs> That's such BS, dude. Come on, man. No way. <laughs> oh, I just realized. Oh, that's so funny. That's so stupid, too. You'll see what I mean in a second. Um, okay. I hate this game. All right, I'm going to set, <laughs> and I'm going to end my turn. <laughs> You're mad because it gains the attack, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll draw. We'll go stand by main. Oh, man. That's really funny. Uh, let me think about this. All right. Um, let's go ahead and normal summon ourselves a Sangin. Yep. Go to battle. Yep. Let's hit into this armed wing. Let's see what this is. <laughs> it's Witch of the Black Forest. So normally, if you didn't have an effect, it would live by 50. But <laughs> I'm going to take 450 and then um, send it to grave. Thinking. Hold on. I'm actually going to collude and damage oh, them. Okay. So I'll take another 14. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to use my witch. Okay. You've got a lot of darks in grave, so dad is offline, which is good. Wow, nothing seems great here. Um, I'll pick up Snipe Hunter. Sure. Uh, I'll hit for 1,000. Yep. Okay, he's out of Emperor range. That's good. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll draw. Stand by sure. main. It's fine. I will normal summon Snipe Hunter. Hmm. This has been a bad omen the last time I let this live, so I'm thinking if I want to. <laughs> yeah, Snipe is fine. Okay, I'm going to Snipe. I'm going to... Okay. Discard Jinzo. I'm going to target. Oh, what do I want to target? Because I can attack over that stupid arm wing now. You can. Let's pop this back row. Uh, sure. Roll for it. Oh, oh <laughs> man. I'm so salt. Dude, what is my luck, bro? Come on, dude. You can always go again. Yeah, I could. Wouldn't it? Oh, my. I hate this game. Uh, 
I'm going to go battle phase, and I'm going to attack okay. over your arm wing. I will allow it. So I'm going to take, uh, what is this, 350? Yeah. Okay, sure. All right, finally got rid of it. Main phase two, I'll set a card, and I'll end my turn. It was actually quite a pest for you. I'm surprised. My snipe hunters just aren't good anymore, man. Remember what it was like the best card in the game, too? <laughs> yeah. When we first pulled it, we were like, oh, this Seriously. card's crazy. Times have changed. All right. I think I'm going to switch my Sangan to defense. Okay. And I think I'm actually just going to pass the turn. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, Quit looking in that extra deck. Nah, wait, I might have Get some good stuff. There. Get out of there. Ah, wait, this is so good. I'm going to normal summon Psychic Commander. Oh my god. I have to torrential this. I can't let this go through. Uh, I, I have a response, I think. Okay. Uh, I'm going to activate Trap Stun. Finally put the Trap <laughs> Stuns in the main deck. It only Finally. took how many episodes? They've made it in, though. I didn't even hit the right one with Snipe Hunter, too. That's so upsetting. Okay. All right. So Trap Stun's up, torrential negated, and uh, now you're free to do what you want. Be my guest, buddy. <laughs> All right, buddy. Uh, I'm going to go Battle Phase. I'm going to attack into your monster. Would you psychic. like to pay for I, a psychic commander? <laughs> no, nah, I don't think I will. I think I'll pass on it this time. I'll trigger the effect of Sangin, though. Sure. I'll grab myself a blizzard. Sure. Okay. okay. And then I'll attack you directly for 15. Okay. I uh, will take it. Okay. Uh, main phase two. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this. I'm going to synchro for seven. Okay. Into Psychic Life Trancer. Oh my <laughs> god. I mean, it's big! It's big! I'm gonna use Psychic Life Trancer the oh, back. The place. I'm gonna banish, <laughs> and I'm gonna gain 1,200 life points back. I mean, that's legit, man. That's yeah, good. Yeah, dude, when you're on 250, anything feels like you're winning. Alright, bro, it's your turn. Alright, I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna fire off a Lure of Darkness. Yeah, that's good. Okay. See what we get here. That is quite interesting. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this blizzard. Okay. I'm going to activate Black Whirlwind. Okay. I'm going to activate Black Whirlwind. A fun game, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna normal summon Bora and trigger Black Whirlwinds. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we're gonna go digging for some monsters here now. I'm gonna go for a copy of Gale and a copy of Kalut. Okay. I'm gonna special summon Gale. Sure. I'm gonna have the attack of Psychic Life Transfer. Sure, it goes down to 12. Correct. I will proceed to the battle phase. Uh, okay. I'm going to hit Gale into Psychic Life Trancer. Man, poor Life Trancer. I thought it was going to get its time to shine. Is that fine? I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> think hard. I think I'm just dead. I don't know your back row, but I feel like you're dead. I think I'm 100% dead, which is so unfortunate. You can try to play to your outs. I'll activate Book of Moon on my Psychic Life Trancer. Okay, interesting. So that will set it. The attack will go through and then it will flip up the Psychic Life Trancer in defense then. It's no longer affected by Gale because it was set. So yeah, so the attack will continue and I'm actually gonna take, uh, oh no, just uh, so then damage step, I just collute here. Yeah, you got it. You, yeah, you got it. Then, yeah, Bora. Yeah, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> oh man, if only that Life Trancer lived another turn, I gained another 12, bro. Then we were because you had the stabilized. Psychic Commander, too. <laughs> yeah, I had Psychic Commander and another Krebons in there, too, dude. <laughs> unreal. Unreal. God. Gage, I never thought I'd see the day where Psychic Life Transfer actually activated and resolved its Yeah, effect. me neither, dude. Me neither. I was hoping it was going to carry me, but it didn't get there. Unfortunately, Gale just having it. Gale's just a little too big, dude. I feel like it yeah, was like I mean, it's, 26. Then it would at least it's, match Gale. It's actually good, though, because it makes your Emperor live if you happen to top deck it. So those little interactions, they can come up. That was a pretty good back and forth, though, to be fair. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm hoping it won't last this long this game, though. I'm ready. I'm going to go second duelist. Good luck. Okay. Good luck. We'll see how good it does for you. All right, this is a bit of an interesting one. I'll start by firing off a lure of darkness. Go for it. Uh, not super happy about this. I'll get rid of Blackwing Mistral, the Silver Shield. Oh no, maybe you don't have Crush Card Virus, that means. I'll start my turn nice and simple. I'll just set and I'll just set. Humble T set and pass. All right, sounds like a plan to me, Duelist. I'll draw, stand by me. I'm gonna start my turn by special summoning Cyber Dragon. That card is glued to your hand this episode. Yeah, it's definitely helping me out. I'm going to normal summon Psychic Commander. Um, hmm. I kind of just want to torrential this. It's a two for one. It's fine. I think I'm just going to do it. Seems pretty okay to me. What is this? Yeah, I had a, I had a Sangan set as well. All so. right, all right. 
We're going to break even on the exchange. I think I'm actually just going to grab another Sangin. Go for it. Not a problem. Uh, I will set two cards, and I'll end my turn. All right. I will draw. That is not too bad. I'm just going to fire off Heavy Storm. Let's just clean up the back row. Mm, come on, bro. Come on. No. Oh, he's on the Chaos Trap Hole. This guy over here. Wow. Nice card. Nice card. I can respect it. Okay. What do we want to do now? Suppose I'll just get the pressure going. I'm going to fire off a Black Whirlwind. Yep. I'm going to normal summon a Kalut and trigger Black Whirlwind. Yep. Let's grab a copy of Gale, and I'm just going to immediately special summon it to the field. Yep. Let's get in for 27. 27 is fine. We will proceed to main phase two. My monsters are quite weenie-ish, and I know you've got some big monsters that can run them over. So I kind of want to go for a synchro play here. I think I'm going to do that. Let's go ahead and sync these off. Let's make an armed wing. Armed wing seemed to do pretty good last time, so I'll just pass on that. All right, I'll draw. Uh, I'll set a card and I'll set a monster. I'll end my turn. All right, food for armed wing. Love to see it. I will draw. All right, let's just play this a little bit conservatively. I'm going to go to the battle phase. Sure. Let's attempt to attack into the armed wing here. Sure. It or is... with the armed wing, excuse me. Yeah, it's witch. So I'll take uh, 16. Correct. And I'll get my witch search. All right. I'll pick Only up a... a dark engrave. Pick up another witch. Sure. I'll go to main phase two. I'll just set a monster and I'll pass it over to you. Okay, I'll draw. All right, uh, I'm going to banish light in the dark. Ooh, that's bad. CED. There's the boy. Yep. I'll follow it up with the Witch of Black Forest. Sure. And then uh, I'll use the CED. Pay a thousand. Okay. It's sure. been a minute. It's been a minute. I got to play been, around. How many though. episodes has it been? I, it's been a few though. Yeah. So how many, how much you take in here? Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to take 2,700 from this. Okay. I got to get rid of my okay. dad. Oh, the one thing I am happy about though, Gage is that I had a Sangan set when you did that. Oh, so... that's not good, bro. All, All right. right, so two mandatory triggers going on. Witch is going to be chain link one, and Sangan will be chain link two. So I have to go first, which is a little bit unfortunate. So I have to pick, and then you can maybe adjust to that. But I think I'm just going to pick a copy of Blizzard the Far North. I think that's my best option. Yeah, it seems pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and then with my <laughs> witch. Oh, my God, fuck. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Blizzard's so good, dude. Um, I'll pick up I'll pick up Snipe Hunter. Okay, sure. Go ahead, your turn. You better hope I don't draw anything That's, good. Draw this Kalu. game is over. <laughs> no clue. Can we have game? You are so lucky I don't have a level four blackwing in my graveyard. Are Otherwise, you kidding this game me? Was, was that 100% oh over? Oh my yeah, god. Because then I could just make Goyo and game shot you, but I don't Jesus. think I have lethal now. Oh, so close. Are you serious? There's nothing. Oh, and you're going to have Snipe Hunter too. That's rough. Oh, if only I had. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if only that card worked. That card is so garbage. <laughs> oh man, I don't think I have it. Thank God. Oh my. I don't think I have it. I'm kicking myself that I don't, but there's like nothing I can do. And Snipe Hunter's good. All right, well, normal summon Blizzard, activate the effect. Yep. I will get back. I suppose I should get back the non tuner. We'll get back the copy of Kalut, and I guess we'll sync off here. Get Magical Android. Let's go Magical Android. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. I'm going to hit you for 24 direct. I'll take it. All right. And then we'll go to main phase two. And I think I'll just end and I'll gain 600 from magical end. So not really complaining about that. You need to hit with snipe hunter. So make it happen, buddy. <laughs> well, yeah, I, at least I drew a card that it doesn't do anything. So I'll normal summon snipe hunter. Okay. All right. All comes down this, to it, this. this is what it comes down to. I'm going to discard my body as a shield. I mean, that's pretty dead at this point. So yeah, right. roll it. Alex. I swear to God, if I miss with this Snipe Please Hunter miss. again, it's Please immediately miss. leaving the deck. Let's go. Uh, oh, okay. Fair, Ooh. fair, fair, fair. You Ooh. missed before. I know, so I know. Is, it's only fair. Fine. Get in for 15. All right, I'll take the 15. Maybe that 600 will matter. Who knows? Still very much in a position where I could lose to, like, everything. Go ahead. Your turn. I just need, like, a monster yeah, and you're dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Is I'll normal summon it? Gale. Yeah. Attack of Snipe Hunter. Damn it. Good game, buddy. No. No. <laughs> oh, good games, dude.
I had Black Whirlwind as well, and I didn't have any way to, you know, take advantage of it. So I was I was hoping there might be something, but you know, it was just Dude, in my hand. But. I got to change something up. It's just, I don't know. You you, you would have fucking Heavy Storm, too. I had Chain Chaos <laughs> Trap Hole. I was ready for anything. <laughs> so uh, you're really on the Chaos Trap Hole. Tell me the theory. I, 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 I talked about this in my opening, but I want to hear what you were thinking with so this. So I decided to side it, and the thing is, is I know you're playing Blackwing, so you're only playing, like, all darks and then, like, maybe sure. a couple lights. So the thing is, is we haven't been able to experiment with, like, things that negate the summon, like Solemn Judgment or anything, because we haven't been able to pull them. And I think that's still, like, really good, because I'm able to stop you from actually sticking anything, and it also banishes the card, too, which is really big. So, yeah. I don't no, know, that's I just felt like it wasn't that bad, so. 2,000 life points is pretty steep, though, but, I mean, it does hose a lot of our deck, and there's no way to interact with it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, the one thing I like about you... Correct, and I think that's really good for you specifically because that means I can't Icarus attack in response if it's a black wing. And yes, you have to pay 2K, but then you don't have to worry about Icarus attack in that instance. And for all we know, that could just be the game decider and you just win because you Chaos Trap hole one of my black wings. Mm -hmm. So I, I like the theory. The Trap Suns are in the main deck as well. What other changes did you make? I'm curious. That's about it, actually. I have three My Body as a Shield and three Traps done. I was just trying to figure out a way to like stick like Black Rose or like the CED and be able to resolve it. That's the first CED we resolved in a hot minute too but you had the saying and i forgot you you added another saying with saying i did game, i did so yeah. i was like i was hoping you would forget that sangan was added so that way you would just emperor instead of attacking first because although you had to play around kalut you could have attacked into the sangan first oh i don't think and i so, still would have ever attacked like i probably should have attacked into the face down yeah but i, I forgot like, I'm it was trying, i don't know what you'd be afraid of that i would have set i suppose yeah not set so, but i was afraid of kalut because i was like i definitely just can't attack into your black wing dude because i'll lose it Right. But. So I think you were just getting tunneled that way, which is understandable because Kalut has been your demise for the last several episodes. And this one included, to be fair. Yep. But man, Gage, uh, whew, this isn't just like a win streak. I mean, you've been getting too owed on top. You got to change know. something up, buddy. You got to change know. something up. I don't know why I'm getting too owed, too. Like, I feel like my deck's not bad. It's just, oh, like, oh, I didn't even get, you know what? I didn't even get Icarus <laughs> attack this episode. I'm upset now, too, because I thought <laughs> I tried You're to. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I tried oh to play. God. I was like, the only reason I'm losing is this fucking Icarus attack in these cards. <laughs> and then, like, you don't even flip Icarus attack and you still 2 0 me. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, you're right. I did not Icarus attack the whole game. Last game, I actually had Crush Card in hand, but I had oh, no yeah. way to actually use it. And oh, I'm, no. I'm just waiting for the fucking moment I can Crush Card you. But like, part of me is almost thinking that I don't even need it. However, I'm thankful for it for a few reasons. A, it's obviously like insane, so I'm not going to not play it. But B, if I hadn't played the Crush Card, I wouldn't have put Sangen in my deck. And honestly, Sangen's been kind of an all-star in my deck the last few episodes. Like, the time Times where it's just cycled for another Sangen, or then it gives me a turn or two to think about what I want to actually do. I can get a Gale, I can get a Blizzard, I can get a Kalut. It gives me a lot of flexibility in actually tutoring in the deck when, yeah, Black Whirlwind's in there too, but it's just like added consistency to the deck as well. And had I never pulled the Crush card, I probably never would have put Sangen in the deck, but I've actually just been impressed by Sangen by itself, regardless of the interaction with Crush card altogether. I was kind of hoping that during this game here, I was excited because I had the Cyber Dragon plus the Psychic Commander, which means I can Ooh. actually summon my level eights. So, so I was that like, you could have gone into Stardust. Stardust. I could have gone to Stardust, Red Dragon, Archfiend. Those are the two, but... I mean, that's why I'm also happy I'm on Gale, because Gale can actually out Stardust, mm -hmm. and there's not many outs to Stardust yep. in the game, but Gale, luckily, is one of them. Red Dragon, Archfiend is 3k attack, isn't 3K, it? 3k, yep, he's big. Yeah, so he's big, so Gale by itself can't out it, but man, whew, this is, uh... This is going to continue to get very interesting because uh, I just continued to be more and more impressed with how this deck is performing. I did get Turbo Pack 2 mm -hmm. this time around, and uh, I didn't pull... I, oh, actually... <laughs> I actually did pull something good, but I didn't play it because I actually don't need it in my deck. I got Foolish Burial. Oh, that is a good pickup. That's a real good pick. You got the super rare one too. Damn, you out here flexing, It is a bro. super <laughs> rare Foolish. Yeah, I was saying this is our only episode, not our only episode, but one of our only chances to get it because I don't think it's really in any other set that we're going to have access to. It initially came in like a structure deck and Turbo Pack reprint might be our only shot. I know for you, Foolish would be way better oh, because you be have crazy, much more yeah. graveyard interactions. Yeah, for me, I mean, like I could 
foolish something for Blizzard, but I'm not going to play foolish just so I could do that. That just mm -hmm. doesn't seem worth it to me. Did you get anything um, out of your Shining Darkness pulls? Yeah, I actually did play. I was playing one new card. I did actually get, this is big for me. I know you're going to laugh at this. I got a black winged dragon. I, you know what? I got one too. I didn't end up playing it though. <laughs> you don't need it. You have so many better synchros I know. I got, all, I got all the other better signer dragons. It's okay. Like, <laughs> like, so this card's good for me. A, it's on theme, which is the most important part. But B, why this is nice is I didn't have a generic eight. And so even though this is probably the worst generic eight I could possibly play, it's nice because now I have the possibility to go into it. Like, let's say I snatch steal something and then I have the ability to make an eight. I can actually go into this now mm -hmm. where otherwise that wasn't an option before. The effect is like, OK, it's also twenty eight hundred attack. So that's like pretty big. And the card is fine. I'm not like super bent out of shape. I wanted to get the Infernity Doom Dragon. I don't know yeah. if you pulled one of those. I didn't pull but it, But no. he's a 3k attacker, uh, level 8 synchro. He requires a dark tuner, but clearly that's not a problem on my end. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get anything cool. I got, like, Infernity Launcher, which you would think is, like, oh. sick. I got Infernity Launcher and Mirage, but, like, I don't okay. have Barrier or anything like that, and that's all in this set. So it was, like, it was like a pipe dream to be able to play some form of Infernity. You can rest assured knowing that I did not pull Breeze. Oh, <laughs> I was I was praying you didn't pull the breeze because breeze is so yeah. good. It's just you add it with whirlwind and summon it. Oh, yeah, so breeze good. would have been an instant auto include if I pulled it. It's also eleven hundred attack, so it plays under the smaller black wings. Uh huh. So that would have been a super nice pickup, but it's an ultra, so the chances of getting it were super low. But uh, I got my chaos trap holes. I got the uh, silent graveyards. I don't think we need those now, but in the future, if we're playing more like graveyard reliant decks, I think that card's actually. Pretty pretty cool uh you probably got spore i imagine as well it was a yeah, common yeah but i don't have lone fire blossom so it still doesn't matter for me yeah yeah i guess it's just like a level one tuner i guess but hey mm -hmm. one for one we have one hey, for one <laughs> we do have one for one. Oh, alex dude are you excited for next episode though it's duelist revolution oh, time it's isn't a it? big one yes duelist revolution oh, man that's gonna be a game if there's a okay if there's a set that's gonna change the game for you it's D-Rev, because this set probably has more generically powerful good cards than anything in the last, what do you want to say, five sets, oh, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Last five sets haven't been that great. They haven't been that kind. But the Duelist Revolution's huge, dude. Yep. Warning, Daler, Pot of Duality. Duality. It keeps uh -huh. going, dude. It's such a good set. This is, if there's a time where you need me to whiff on a set, it's going to be D-Rev, because you're going to need all the help you can get this time around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. I got three fucking like iron core kawaki like some spell card that works with iron core kawaki meru that's like a oh, super rare you know what i got that's actually pretty funny i got two nimble sunfish so i can actually play them both and they both have that's their, like, hilarious their <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was like yo fish otk baby let's go <laughs> well fishboard blasters technically <laughs> oh look there we go oh it's over for you next episode dude thanks for giving oh, me the over. idea <laughs> Oh, man. There's no way you could pull that off. No, if you could no. pull that off, I would let you. Like, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> so, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression Series. I've solidified my win streak to 4-0. And, Gage, you're going to have to change it up, buddy. I don't know what you're going to do, but there's so something needs to be done because this is this is not looking like a good trend for you. Don't worry. Team Gage has full faith in me. I'm sure of it. I'll, I'll make him proud. <laughs> We'll see how fair weather they truly are. But we do have to shout out our patrons as always. So big shout outs to Sean, Shadow1317, Shotagonist, Neo Cypher Slacker, Ika Ironfag, Tim 0 x 3 Brian Dancer, and Gayoko Rasmus, Pony Stark, Part 2, Joshua Wiley, Dan the Man Hoban, Leo Roche, Michael Dente, Synchro Guy, Ole, Thomas Nelson, Jarvis Martin, Timothy Chen, Emil Cohen, Brother Paul, Logan Thomas, Benjamin Fuller, Pure Ace, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hot Pack, Sylvia Wilds, Dragon Lord, Nehru Celeste, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, GW, Jordan Coons, Lumpy, Dolly Wop, Shane Reese, Rock Lee 325, Peter Gregory, Mystic Walk, True Nerdgasm, and Dre Connick. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you in Duelist Revolution.